Hey there Cosmic Warriors and welcome back to another video. Okay, so in today's video we are going to be taking a look at the differences between the Aries Sun, the Aries Moon and the Aries Rising. So definitely stay tuned. Now this series is an updated version of a series that I made about four years ago on the channel back in 2017 but within the space of four years my understanding and my knowledge of astrology has certainly changed. So I hope that I'm able to bring some new and insightful pieces of information to the table today. Now, I also just wanna say here that um, watch the whole video, even if you're here for your sun, moon or rising, watch the whole video because things can interlink. And another thing to mention is well, things are also subject to change depending upon your sun, moon and rising combination. So just keep that in mind. However, this of course is my own analysis, but certainly feel free to add to uh, the discussion in the comment section down below because your feedback in this respect is greatly, greatly appreciated. Before we do dive into this, certainly make sure that you give this video a like if you like it. Also make sure to subscribe if you have not already and to of course click that little bell icon so that you can keep yourself updated with further content from myself. And one more quick thing to mention and that is that I have some merchandise pieces that are available so go to the link in the description box below if you are interested. Right, so with all of those introductions out of the way, let's do this. Okay, so just to give a brief overview of the sun, moon and rising, these three placements are often referred to as your big three within the astrological community and many people like to mention them as a way to express their very basic overall personality. Naturally, however, as most of us know here, astrology goes much, much deeper than these three components, but I still think it's good to learn about these three placements, especially if you're a beginner and even if you are more advanced when it comes to astrology, still watch this video because who knows, maybe you will learn something new. All right, so to begin, let's start by looking at the sun in Aries. What I'm gonna do is show you some key words associated with the sun in astrology, read through those, through those key words, take them in, but what does it mean if these key words are being combined with the sign or with the archetype of Aries? Well, it creates an energy of purposeful motivation, energy and creativity and of a daring, bold, honest and brave self-expression. Likewise, it creates an energy of pioneering and competitive creativity along with an energy of individuality based on adventure, assertion and being first. And it also creates an energy of conscious excitement and initiation. But what does this specifically say about you if you were born under this sign, meaning that you have the sun in Aries natally? Well, it suggests that you are intrinsically aware of your personal goals and of the things that you seek to achieve. And so you might set out with the best of intentions of pursuing such things. And so in this respect, you can be a leader, someone who is bold and courageous and willing to step up to the plate before anybody else does. So for example, you might set out a personal goal that is focused on fitness and so you'll push to reach whatever that goal is. Could be something like running five miles or doing 100 burpees in a row. Or you might set out a personal goal that is focused on diet as another example. Could be something like cutting down on alcohol or consuming more healthy calories. Again, you will push to reach whatever that goal is. And whilst many people contemplate on their personal goals, you're already at the forefront making them happen. 
you're out there on the battlefield of life, so to speak, doing whilst others are thinking. Even if it's just you on your own, you're still willing to go for it. In fact, you're most likely someone who is completely fine with being solo. You might fully embrace your independence and your freedom in this way. And so you thrive on these things. See, while some people prefer a partner or a friend to accompany them, you're okay with eating at restaurants on your own or you're okay with going on a night out or to a club or <laughs> to a bar on your own. <laughs> now the same could be said about the Aries moons and the Aries risings, but for you Aries suns, you might be more purposeful and conscious of such things. So you might wake up one day and think, you know what, I really want to go on a bike ride. So you'll do it. Or you might think, I want to walk 10,000 steps. Again, you'll do it. You will head out that door and go for that walk regardless if somebody else accompanies you or not. Now this is not to say that you don't enjoy other people's company or that you don't have companions or friends. You very much do and you very much do like interacting and engaging with others. You can actually be quite social friendly people. I'm just saying that you don't depend on others to do these things. See, whereas your opposite sign, Libra, might depend or rely more on others to join them, you're like, nah, if I want to do something, I'm going to do it regardless of what others think. And so in this respect, you don't necessarily care about other people's judgments and feedback. Sure, you'll listen to other people's advice and you might also show appreciation to those who share their opinions with you, but at the end of the day, you're going to do what you want. And this right here is what makes you a highly independent individual. The following on from this point, the best word to describe you is actually individual <laughs> and this reminds me of a neighbour uh, of mine growing up who would often say to me, this was when I was just a child, he would often say to me, you're an individual Hannah and I would yell at him. <laughs> I would yell right back saying, no I'm not. Now whilst I don't have an Aries sun, I have an Aries moon with an Aquarius sun and to be fair, the Aquarius sun, Aries moon, combination is very, it's a highly individualistic combination here. Still though, it's you Aries sons who might thrive on being an individual. You might actually enjoy it when others compliment you for being an individual or when they applaud you for being gutsy, for being quite brave and courageous. So for example, maybe you've taken risks that many people would shy away from or maybe you've accepted certain challenges that others would feel intimidated and put off by. Then whenever you receive admiration and appreciation for such things, your ego feels really good. Speaking of challenges, you're typically someone who is up for a good fun challenge. Could be the likes of doing yoga every day for a month or could be something like making a video every day for a month. I guess you could see this on YouTube uh, through the likes of Vlogmas for many YouTubers, which is quite interesting because Zoella, who is actually a triple Aries by the way, she's the perfect study case when it comes to analysing that Aries archetype. Yeah, Soella, she does Vlogmas every year and I think she missed a couple but there's still a determination there. There's a push to go for it. 
However, what might also be the case with you Aries Suns is how you might become frustrated if or when you do not live up to the challenges or goals you set out to do. Then again, maybe it depends on what the challenge or goal actually is, or maybe it depends on how much it means to you as an individual. I mean, you're okay with turning your attention towards a different direction if or when you're called to do so. And there can also be times when you initiate other projects or tasks depending on what does come up. Also depending on your energy levels as well and upon what inspires you, you know, what gets you sparked up. In fact, it's suggested that inspiration drives you, it motivates you. Likewise, passion drives you, passion motivates you. So if you don't feel inspired by something or by someone, or if you don't feel passionate, you might turn your focus or your attention towards other people or projects that do. Though seeing as this is the sun in Aries, there's something deliberate and purposeful about where you focus your energy and your attention. So if there's a particular goal that you've set your eyes on, you might assert much willpower and drive towards obtaining it. And if or when other sparks of inspiration come along, sure, you might act on these things, but you also won't typically forget that original goal. You might act on other things while still being aware of the path that you took in the first place. So you might be seeking to reach a particular amount of subscribers on YouTube, for example, but this doesn't stop you from doing other creative projects or hobbies on the side or you might seek to achieve a degree or a diploma at school, but this doesn't stop you from learning about other subjects or from taking on other courses in your spare time. And to be honest, you might possess a lot of energy <laughs> on your many quests. You are typically very energetic people. You're quite excitable people too, and I think that excitement is what drives you to an extent as well. So if a project or a course or event, an event or a relationship, whatever it is, if a particular thing doesn't excite you or energize you, you'll most likely know. <laughs> and your gut might also signal to you when something is or isn't for you energetically. In fact, it could be suggested that you get pretty strong physical reactions to things. So this could be your body telling you to leave a dangerous situation, or this could be your body telling you to start a project or a relationship. And seeing as this is the sun in Aries, well, this is suggesting to me that you're more aware of your physical and gut reactions to people and situations. Still though, when it comes to excitement and energy, you usually bring the excitement and energy into situations and you can express yourself in a way that is quite childlike as well. And this reminds me of my airy son nephew because every time he greets me, he runs towards me very, very excited and he gives me a big hug and then he asks me how I am. The next thing he's telling me all about his life stories. And so in your case, Ari Sons, maybe you enjoy, you enjoy sharing things about your personal experiences. You like to tell stories about what you did yesterday or about what happened at work or at school, for example. The following on from this point, your stories are me focused. They are self-centered. So in this way, you won't really speak on behalf of others, but you'll gladly speak on behalf of yourself. And you might also dislike it when others try to speak on behalf of other people when they aren't present because this means that certain people 
they can't speak for themselves. And if you ever think that there's people bad mouthing a friend of yours or a relative of yours who in actuality isn't present, you might be super defensive. In fact, you might fight for your loved ones. So you might put yourself in danger trying to defend a family member from an attack, for example. Now, this doesn't have to solely be a physical thing. It may also be financially or verbally and so on. And you also might not be as emotionally triggered as an Aries Moon would be, or even as an Aries Mars individual would be either. But there's a part of your ego that feels as if it's your duty, it's your responsibility to defend or to fight anyone or anything that threatens you and those you love. You might actually be willing to do the stupidest, the stupidest of things as a way to show your love, yeah. You might take risks that others look at you as pure reckless for and as thoughtless for, and just, just careless really, but in your mind, it's like, I'm doing this in the name of love. So you might move across the country as a way to express your ego and your heart. Or you might completely drain your bank account as a way to do these things. Though, to be fair, I think these types of things are more associated with your younger years, perhaps. But then as you do get older and a bit more mature and a bit more aware of yourself, I think you learn to manage these things a lot better. You become more aware of the consequences to your actions and of the precautions that are necessary if you are to keep yourself out of trouble. Though on the other hand, maybe some of you continue to ram into people and things well into your adulthood. Or maybe some of you continue to act as the hero because it fuels your ego. Now, I'm not saying that this is necessarily a bad thing. It's just an observation. Essentially, however, there's this quality to you that seeks to stand up for the underdog by placing yourself into a hero role. And to be frank, this can be helpful and beneficial for others because, well, it's people like you, Ari Sons, who stands up to bullies at school. It's you who puts others in their place when they need to be. It's you who is brave and courageous enough to say, this right here isn't right. It's not okay. Now, some people might not like this quality about you, but seeing as this is the sun, you probably won't care too much. People might try to silence you or stop you, but then you find a way of speaking up and doing the thing regardless. In fact, people might feel intimidated by this part of your personality because I suppose it's difficult to control and also they might think that your way of being candid and to the point that that is quite daunting, especially those who are more sensitive, <laughs> like the water signs. Though on the other hand, you may be viewed as inspirational by others. Others might admire your ability of acting on what you want so boldly and so confidently. And she might also be praised for your heroic personality. Now, some astrologers, they associate the rising sign with our life path. And then they look at the sun sign as representing the individual that we are striving to become. And so in your case, Ari Suns, perhaps what you are striving to become is this heroic, confident and bold and brave individual, but also this individual that is quite childlike and excitable. Now, when it comes to this uh, heroism that I just previously mentioned, well, maybe, maybe, growing up, you, you grew up with a father figure who came across as quite heroic himself. Maybe he worked within the military or within a security field, or maybe he worked in a job that often put his life at risk um, or in danger, such as him working with chemicals or with sharp items or on a construction site. Or maybe he worked at a profession that involves 
or involved <laughs> basically saving people such as a lifeguard or a fitness coach um, again looking at security work or even as a firefighter quite possibly you picked up on these heroic traits because of this father figure or maybe he would always push on you to pursue your goals so he would often encourage you by acting like your number one cheerleader so maybe he would congratulate your grades and your achievements for example or perhaps he, um, he was quite active as a parent so he would show you how to ride a bike or he would take you on fun trips or he would attend any games or competitions that you were a part of growing up. Then again, perhaps for some of you, your father wasn't active. Perhaps he wasn't or isn't present in your life. So maybe this absence from the father has led to the independence of yourself. Or another possibility is that you and this father figure would often fight and butt heads. Maybe you didn't listen to his authority or to his commands and direction growing up, Aries sons. Though whether or not you had or have a good relationship with your father, there's this assertive pioneering element of your personality. This part of you that doesn't want to listen to others. This part of you that sets out to create your own path and you might also be quite me first focused while doing so. So while some of you were taught by your father to go after what you want, others of you have in a way been pushed to go after what you want because you haven't had any choice in the matter. Still however, there's this, I will not stop or move for anyone. So in this respect, you pursue your goals unapologetically without much regard or thought for others. But at the same time, I think life teaches you how to consider others. And when it does, you might find that others cannot only help you on your path, but you also learn a great deal about your own individuality through other people. However, there's still this competitive streak to you Aries sons. You might actually take pride in beating the competition or in doing something first before everybody else. Just be careful though that you don't get a big head in the process because others might not respond lightly to this. Then again, maybe you don't care. <laughs> But yet, you'll throw a fit when something doesn't go your way. So yeah, basically what I'm saying is that our interpersonal relationships can come in handy. Though still, however, if there's one sun sign that is confident and self-assured in who they are as individuals, it's you, Aries suns. Now before we do move on to the moon, make sure to locate the house placement of the sun because this placement is going to show you the area of life that this energy is playing out in. And also remember aspects because aspects can show you any difficulties that may arise along with any other energies that may influence that sun energy. Okay, so moving along, let's now look at the moon in Aries. What I'm gonna show you are some key words associated with the moon in astrology read those key words, take them in. But what does it mean if these key words are being combined with the sign or with the archetype of Aries? Well, it creates an energy of action, self-assertion and drive based on one's own emotional reactions and emotional needs. And it also creates an energy of headstrong to the point emotional support and of pioneering emotional cycles and of a heroic and noble emotional security. Likewise, it creates an energy of unconscious competi competition, defensiveness and anger slash frustrations and of childlike independent caregiving and safety and protection. But what does this specifically say about you if you were born under this moon sign, meaning that you have the moon in Aries natally? Well, it suggests that within your family home growing up, there was plenty of action, activity, it was action packed. <laughs> Let's just say that. And what I mean by this is that things might have been 
unstable, unsettling, uh, with little room for reliability and with little, little room for feelings of contentment and inner ease. So this could have included the likes of fighting between family members, possibly even violence and severe danger, or the likes of anger and frustrations from family members due to things not going their way. Perhaps family members were pushy and quite aggressive, or this could have looked like family simply butting heads and clashing in their opinion quite often. Maybe you witnessed your parents fighting and arguing quite a lot, or perhaps your parents separated and went their individual paths. Then again, perhaps the authorities were called to the house due to family members being in great danger or maybe emergency services would arrive to your home because someone within the family home was greatly hurt possibly by another family member and so they desperately needed medical support. Though on the other hand, maybe for some of you, things were not as severe maybe as what I'm saying here previously, but perhaps still emergency services were called due to falls, accidents, injuries, maybe you yourself, Aries Moons, you experienced a few bumps and falls growing up. And this is quite interesting because as I say, I have an Aries Moon and my mum told me that whenever I was a toddler, I climbed out of my cot and I fell. I broke my arm, but nobody realized until the next morning. I didn't even realize clearly. Also, whenever I was about 12, well, 10 to 12 ish, ish, I was hit up the face with a golf club and I have a scar above my lip. And I also broke my nose, but I didn't realize until I was a lot older. Hey, hey. Maybe you can relate Aries Moons <laughs> to what I'm saying with these falls and cuts and scars and everything and broken bones. <laughs> or perhaps you have something on your head um, or on your face or on your body specifically that showcases such things. Yeah, you might have been quite a reckless child, always getting into danger and accidents, just always worrying your parents. <laughs> Perhaps due to these reasons, you were always getting shouted at by your parents as well. You might have also been quite disobedient as you refused to take direction from members of authority or from family members. And you might have frustrated your parents greatly for doing these things, especially your mother. In fact, your mother figure, uh, there may have been a mother figure in your life that might have gotten really very angry with you on so many occasions. Maybe she herself is quick to anger or maybe she's quite moody and temperamental and she has very little tolerance for BS, just zero, zero patience for it. Maybe you picked up these things uh, from your mother and you might also have clashed heads with her quite a bit due to how unmanageable you were or how unmanageable you seemed. Maybe from a fairly young age, your mother realized, this child is not listening to me. <laughs> this child is not doing what I want them to do. Possibly resulting in a battle between you and this mother figure. After all, it's most likely that this mother influence was the head of the household, the leader, the boss. And so whatever she wanted, she would get. Whatever she pushed to make happen, it would happen. But then you came along and you, you made her wants and her goals more difficult to obtain. On the other hand, maybe this mother figure instilled in you 
independence. So she would teach you how to stand up for yourself, how to assert yourself into situations, how to defend yourself from people who were disrespectful, disrespectful or from people who would try to control you or take advantage of you. They're just Bringing in another quick personal example, it's interesting because whilst I often would clash with my mother growing up, she also taught me not to take crap from others. Then again, I also think a part of this independence, um, it came about due to the absence of a mother figure or due to the absence of her emotional support and nurturing qualities specifically. Maybe for some of you, your mother was quite frustrated or angry on the inside, or maybe she was dealing with her own emotional well-being because of things that she's been through in the past. Or maybe for others of you, your mother would need space, especially whenever she was feeling a certain way. She, she would need to just be on her own through certain moments. Um, yeah, maybe she just needed space to work through any emotional difficulties of her own. And there's a strong emphasis here being on this word own, because when it comes to you, Aries Moons, you may also seek to deal with your emotions on your own as well. There's something individual and something very self-focused about your emotional world and about what you need. And so in this respect, perhaps you learn from your mother how to manage your emotions without asking for help or for support from others. However, this might be an unconscious thing. Maybe you don't realize whenever you do this. I mean, I know for me that I have a hard time communicating what I need from others. I find it very difficult to let others help me whenever I'm going through something emotionally stressful. And I also have the tendency of blurting out my emotions at more, well, during more inappropriate times. And I can also have the tendency of coming across as brash and very tactless. I honestly, when it comes to tact, I am the worst at it. I'm not the best at consciously thinking, how is this other person going to feel whenever I share my emotions or act on my emotions? Still though, it's something that I'm aware of and trying to work on. It's challenging though, working with the unconscious. It's very hard. <laughs> so maybe you can relate to this. Aries moons. So perhaps there's times whenever you offend someone or when you hurt other people's feelings, um, times whenever you frighten people off even <laughs> with your emotions. The going back to the previous point, maybe on a subconscious level, you think that you don't need others to give you what you need. You don't need others to validate your emotions or how you're feeling because in your mind, you're independent emotionally. You take charge of things when it comes to how you feel. And so in your mind, you take care of yourself. Though I wonder, is it that the absence of a nurturing caregiver led to such things? After all, no one was there to nurture you and so you had no other choice than to nurture and comfort yourself. Still though, maybe some of you were taught how to do such things by a caregiver. Though whatever the case, there's selfishness here. It's me focused. There's a me focused quality when it comes to your emotions. Some of you might actually defend yourself from being cared for and supported by others. You might subconsciously keep people from getting close to you. Likewise, you might take things super personally. You might be very sensitive. And so you, if you ever feel like you're being attacked, you're quick to defend yourself. You're, you're quick to protect yourself. In fact, you're probably more defensive than the Aries suns. And the reason for why I say this is because for you, Aries moons, you are so much more protective of yourselves and your emotions. But at the same time, you're also private romantics on the inside. Whereas with the Aries suns, um, they are more 
outward and expressive, with pursuing romantic relationships and with showing their love and their affection. Aries moons, you're more passive, uh, you're more protective, you're more private. So you might not be willing to make the first move in comparison to an Aries sun, for example. And you might also not be willing to open up romantically unless you feel safe and unless you feel secure with someone else. In fact, I think that on one hand, you are courageous enough to share how you feel with others. But on the other hand, these feelings may be more macho in appearance. They may not be soft and gentle. So sure, you might be bold and daring enough to say, hmm, you know, that's not something I like, or actually, this is more my style, or um, in fact, that is what I want. But when it comes to tenderness, when it comes to truly opening up and being all mushy and sweet and heartfelt and super loving, well, I think you need to feel connected with someone especially emotionally connected with someone before you do these things. Yeah, I don't think others realize just how much you go weak at the knees sometimes or that you also possess fears. Because perhaps what others are used to getting from you is this, move out of my way, I got this, you know, I, I got this attitude. Now, again here, on one hand, this shows that you're willing to handle things um, in your life pretty independently. But on the other hand, maybe you leave little to no room for support. Now, to be fair though, I think you improve on these things with age and maturity, or maybe by you becoming aware of these things, you learn to be open about any challenges or difficulties that you face. See, whilst with the Airy Suns, there's a conscious willingness to tackle challenges. But with the Aries moons, you may keep these challenges to yourselves. Though speaking of challenges, perhaps your family home was full of them, full of them. Maybe the family dynamic was very challenging within itself. And so a part of your challenge was to keep yourself safe, was to protect yourself, to sort of vent, bend for yourself. Furthermore, maybe you're also quick to defend vulnerable people because of the empathy that you feel towards them. Maybe you are emotionally triggered by people who abuse others or who take advantage of the weak. Could be suggested that you've gotten into a few fights in your day because of how you just can't stand for shady or for sneaky behavior. Or maybe people have attacked or hurt your loved ones and so you fought to defend them. And this is interesting because even though your family might have argued and fought with each other, you also won't stand for it if other people from, the out from outside the home do these things towards your family. And also perhaps you accept that you and family members all have separate individual lives to live and therefore you keep to yourself most times. Though to be fair, on the other hand, you might be comfortable with going a long time without seeing family or loved ones. A bit too comfortable, in fact. And if any conflict or disagreements would arise, maybe you're the first to say, oh well, screw you, I might. You might actually be unwilling to consider others and their opinions because maybe you feel like you don't need to. Essentially, you put your emotional needs first, which at times, yes, can be beneficial, but at other times, it can be quite detrimental. And this right here leads me on to your emotional needs. And I think what you need emotionally is freedom, spontaneity and independence. So if you're in a romantic relationship, for example, you need a partner who isn't going to try to control you or tame you emotionally, so to speak. But you also need a partner who challenges you as well. Someone who isn't actually afraid to stand up to you. 
just like you aren't afraid of standing up for others or for yourself. Likewise, I think you need a partner who is ready to jump into action with you whenever the time strikes, but also someone who helps you feel calm and stable because there can be times when you're impulsive and when you jump into action without thinking things through. So someone who can help you think for a moment about your actions. And even if this isn't found through a romantic partner, this could be through the likes of a friend or a parent um, or through just somebody that you really, really trust. But still, I think that these things that I just talked about are also beneficial for you to learn for your overall emotional well-being, Aries moons. And to be frank as well, you can come across as quite childlike in your emotional reactions to things. And you can be pretty headstrong too. So for example, maybe you feel excited and so you'll act on a certain emotion by posting about something on social media. Then later on, it's like, why did I post that? Why did I even share that? It was just sort of an in the moment thing. I don't feel this way anymore. Or maybe you feel annoyed but then you won't stop being annoyed until you've let out every, <laughs> every ounce of annoyance you have. Yeah, you typically won't rest until that emotion runs its course through your body and through your nervous system. Now, this way of processing your emotions can sometimes lead to the likes of unfinished projects or broken hearts or burned bridges. At the same time, you're also initiators with your emotions. So if you feel confident and up for a challenge, you'll go for it. The only issue is the lasting or the prolonging of the challenge. And what I mean by this is that you might become irritated when a project or an assignment no longer feels exciting anymore. Or you might feel frustrated if at any times you lose the inspiration or the spark of creativity. Though on the other hand, like I said, you're also headstrong, so you might continue acting on your projects even when others give up. Though I think the key to finishing such things lies in your emotions and your feelings. So if you feel the passion, you'll go for it, but if you don't, you might lose interest easily. And I also think some healthy competition helps you too. So this could be you competing with others, but I think it's more specifically you competing with yourself. You sort of out beating yourself from your previous personal best. And you might also gain plenty of emotional satisfaction and fulfillment from knowing, hey, I did that, or hey, I started that, or, oh my gosh, I was the one who went for that when nobody else did. Though going back to your emotional needs, I also think you need physical activity and or sexual activity in order to feel emotionally secure and satisfied. Likewise, I also think you need plenty of calories and food because there is a likelihood of you Aries Moons burning energy quite quickly, especially if you exercise as well. Essentially, getting into the body and moving the body can help regulate your emotions and make you feel more at ease. And if you struggle with anger or if you get pissed off easily, perhaps doing challenging physical movements can help. I know for myself that sprints or high intensity training or cardio, these things can really help me um, feel better and feel good about myself and more alive. They can help my emotions a lot. Then again, maybe a good, uh, a good scream <laughs> or a good yell can help too, or a good cry, you know, a good quality cry where you release your emotions. Though to be fair, I don't think you possess much shame in letting out your emotions. In fact, it's you, Aries and Moons, who encourage others to let it out after you get the ball rolling. Still, however, I think it's with maturity and awareness that you become more of an emotional leader. You become more of an emotional pioneer, so to speak. And with time, you learn how to assert your emotions with confidence and nobility and courage. Though the last thing that I just want to touch on is how you comfort and emotionally support others. 
You might do this by being straightforward and to the point and being quite direct with others. And you do not typically beat around the bush. You don't really like to pussyfoot around a situation. You might just jump in and say, well, what are you gonna do about it? Or how are you gonna act on it? Or how are you going to move forward? Now, whilst this way of supporting can be motivational and it can also it be encouraging, well, it, it can also come across at times as being quite insensitive towards other people's feelings too. It's as if you're rushing others to move past whatever they're feeling, which you yourself can have the tendency of doing when it comes to your own emotions, Aries Moons. Sure, you might act on your emotions as you jump into action with courage, but not everyone else is like this. To be fair, you might struggle to understand that others don't handle their emotions the same way you do. So there's that as well, which by the way, I am kind of guilty of this, <laughs> but still, not everyone tackles their feelings the same way you do. But like I was suggest suggesting earlier, I think with awareness and inner reflection, you learn to be more considerate towards other people's emotions and their needs and their feelings. And I think you become more gentle and more soft and more courteous and affectionate and emotionally intelligent as well. Now, before we move on to the rising sign slash the ascendant, certainly make sure to locate the house placement of the moon because this is going to show you the area of life that this energy is playing out in. And also remember aspects because aspects can show you any difficulties that may arise along with any other energies that may be influencing that moon energy. Okay, so moving on to the Aries rising slash the Aries ascendant. What I'm gonna do is show you some key words associated with the ascendant slash rising. Read those key words, take them in. But what does it suggest or mean if these key words are being combined with the sign or with the archetype of Aries? Well, it creates an energy of a bold and daring self-identity of an athletic and youthful and individualistic physical appearance and of active, aggressive and pushy body movements. Likewise, it creates an energy of a self-focused and catalytic life path and of headstrong and pioneering energy levels and also an energy of childlike and impulse, a childlike and impulsive demeanor. But what does this specifically say about you if you were born under this rising sign slash ascendant, meaning that you have a Aries rising slash ascendant natally? Well, it suggests that you see the world through a lens of initiation, action, risk, exploration, and adventure. And you also see it through a lens of challenge, personal goals, and winning. So for example, you might wake up and ask yourself, what can I do today? What can I assert my energy into? What's drawing me in so I can jump into action? So this could be a project or um, a task that you're working on or something that you're doing around the house, or this could be a person that you're meeting. Essentially, you're naturally and instinctively a go-getter, <laughs> Aries Risings. You are initiators. However, this is not to say that all of you Aries Risings initiate with ease and it's also not to say that there's a good sense of direction when it comes to how you initiate. I suppose in this respect, it's good to locate Mars within your chart, but that eagerness to wake up and take on the day, that readiness to get things moving, that push to pursue your personal goals, these things are still present. They're seeing as I bring up Mars, Mars is your chart ruler. And so the location of Mars will show you a pretty vital and important part of your life. It will show you how and where you assert your energy. It will also show you where your personal goals lie, along with risks that you take and any challenges that you conquer. And it will also show you your energy levels. But if we are to focus on the Aries rising as a singular point, 
you have this view of the world that's willing to jump into action provided that that there is a, a spark of creativity and passion and inspiration and the bigger the challenge the more you might push the greater the challenge the more you assert yourself forward so for example maybe a job decision comes up at work but it's quite the challenge to obtain if you want it bad enough you'll focus all your energy on getting that job and you most likely won't give up until you do sure the position might go to someone else the first time around but maybe you wait until it opens up again or another example here could be maybe a new person walks into your life and you quite like them you'd quite like to pursue them and get to know them more but perhaps there's some obstacles or limitations between you and this person such as a geographic location for example Again, if you want to be with them bad enough, you'll push to make it happen. However, the thing about this is that at times you don't know how to take no for an answer, or you might be unwilling to compromise with others. And so due to these reasons, you might rub people the wrong way, or you might intimidate others, or you might frustrate others because of how pushy you can come across. Perhaps as someone is saying to you, you're not listening to me or I really wish you wouldn't do that, uh, you might not listen. Um, or if someone is trying to tell you to, to be safe or to be a bit more cautious or to think things through a little bit, again, it just goes in one ear and out the other. Yeah, you can really struggle with authority and with directions from others. You're the captain of your ship as far as you are concerned, Aries Risings. Though jumping back to the energy levels here and to self-assertion for a moment, if you feel inspired and passionate, you'll most likely feel more energized. So you'll do more throughout the day or you'll work out or you'll take action on achieving those personal goals of yours. But if you don't feel inspired, you might hunt for people or for situations that do. In this way, there's this energetic activity when it comes to you, where you search for things in life that fuel you and motivate you and drive you. However, this is not to say that you don't have days or times whenever you feel low or whenever you're just not active. You actually might be very content with relaxing and with taking things easy. Then again, perhaps this is something that you come to learn with age and growth. Maybe during um, the earlier stages of your life, you felt a push to do something or to rush to be somewhere. Things were instant and fast. Life for you growing up may have focused on doing and pursuing. But as you get older, you get in touch with what grounds you, with what helps you feel calm and stable and centered. Perhaps many of you live the typical traditional lifestyle of do well at school, go to uni, get the grades, get a secure financial job, find a partner, settle down and have kids. And for those of you who don't necessarily follow this type of path, there's still a push for achievement. There's still a push for success, whatever success is to you. There's a striving for greatness. There's a strong urge to win and to come out on top. But as I said, maybe you grow to feel more settled and more at ease. You mellow out a little bit. Perhaps it's through your many accomplishments and achievements and goals that you learn about who and what is important to you, truly. Maybe you learn about the friendships that you wish to keep or about one-on-one -on -one relationships that matter or about the value of money and wealth and about the security that family provides or the lack thereof. Essentially, you become familiar with life in its many chapters and its many areas. You become up close and personal with the things life as a whole has to offer Aries Risings. And whether you have pleasant experiences or unpleasant ones, you keep moving forward regardless. You keep, keep moving in a, a tunnel vision direction without looking back. And even when you do have times of self-reflection or times whenever you take a trip down memory, memory lane, you take the lessons and realizations in your stride. 
you gain new fine insights and levels of awareness. You might actually thrive on self-improvement and evolving yourself further and further in this respect. And you can be bold and brave and daring and courageous in the process. So for example, you might take on a new opportunity that seems scary to others, especially to those who aren't big on branching out of their comfort zone. Or you might do something very risky and dangerous whilst others look at you like you have a death wish. So sure, you might live a life that seems pretty straightforward and clear in its direction and path, but you also make risky moves and you often redirect your energy into other things with very little notice. So you might decide last minute, I'm moving house. You go and you do it. Or I'm moving jobs. You'll go and you'll do it. Or I'm taking up a new sport. Again, you'll do it. Now, this is not to say that you aren't loyal or committed people. You very much can be. And you often do devote your time and energy into people and situations. But whenever you get that urge to move or initiate something new, you most likely will not let it go unnoticed you'll most likely be quite vocal about your wants and about your ambitions and your goals. In fact, you might be great at urging and encouraging others to pursue their goals and so on. You're great at motivating people to live up to their full potential and you may also seek out the best in people. Then again, this part of your personality can be a blessing and a curse at times because sure, you might be good at spotting people's strengths and their talents, but you might not be so good at spotting people's weaknesses or their wicked ways. Though to be fair, maybe you do, but you turn a blind eye instead. Or in some cases, perhaps you use other people's weaknesses to your own benefit. Though following on from this point, there is a tendency with you of strategizing your actions to ensure that you come first between you and other people. But above the surface, these things may not be so visible or apparent. Even you yourself may be unconscious of this part of you, but I digress. There's often a naivety when it comes to you, Aries Risings. So there's a childlike innocence about you that you give off and that you radiate outward. And there's also an excitable, energetic part of you that you give off too. So in this way, People may love being in your company because of how uplifting you are to be around. And they may also really appreciate your honesty and your openness, even if it's brutal honesty at times. Could be suggested that you're the most open and the most straightforward due to how out in the open that the rising sign is. So yeah, the most open and straightforward out of this Aries sun, moon and risings here. And you probably don't have time for messing around or for taking things slow. So for example, maybe you jump fast into your relationship or maybe you tell someone exactly how you feel or what you think about a situation. Though, as I said earlier, I think you gradually slow down and take things slower. Maybe you're you're forced to because of multiple mistakes you make throughout your life. However, it's still your free spirit and independence and childlike innocence that lives on even well into your adulthood. And when it comes to those bold and daring actions you've made, they sort of become a part of your self-identity. They become a part of your journey and they tell a story, a story that you're more than willing to share with anyone who is well, willing to listen really. Furthermore, when it comes to your physical appearance, you might appear as quite youthful and fresh faced. Uh, some of you might even prefer not to wear makeup or to not, you prefer, may prefer not to be super accessorized and all glam. Yeah, there can be this childlike look to your face and you might also give off a pretty athletic feel to your appearance too. So you might have a pretty toned body or you might look quite physically fit um, as you work out or you might prefer to wear track suits or jogging bottoms or hoodies. And when you do decide to dress up and go the extra mile, you might appear as quite 
sexy and is quite flirty and fun. In fact, you might be the life of the party anytime you go out and have fun. And when you do go out, you know how to have a good time and you also know how to get others having a good time as well. Maybe you're finding these lockdowns to be quite difficult in this respect because you desperately want to go out and have some fun. Now, this doesn't just have to be actually a party. It, it could be going to a restaurant or a fitness class even. Though whatever the case, you are typically someone who thrives on entertainment and enjoyment and energy and just being active. You gravitate towards situations and events that get you moving. The following on from this point, you might enjoy doing outside activities quite, quite a bit. You might like going for hikes or long walks or on bike rides or going to the beach or going for a run. Anything that gets you out outdoors and just moving about. And you might also like competitive sports where you can be competitive. You might actually be some pretty competitive people where there's a strong desire to win. And as I said, you might possess this type of attitude towards life where it's like, I will win. <laughs> Furthermore, you might push your body past its limits at times, which ties in with those energy levels that I was talking about earlier. So you might take on a physical challenge, for example, and then you completely exhaust yourself in the process, though this exhaustion still won't stop you from being this aggressive pusher. Then again, perhaps something you come to learn is how to really manage these energy levels in, in an efficient and effective way, in a sustainable way, especially for your own health's sake. Interesting here because some astrologers do associate the rising sign with our life path and then the sun sign with the person that we are striving to become. And so in your case, Aries Risings, make sure that you are locating your sun placement for more information. But when it comes to that life path, perhaps a part of your life path is associated with where and how you assert your energy. Maybe a part of, a part of it is about seeing what motivates you and what drives you. And as I said earlier, it's good to also locate Mars in the chart because Mars is that chart ruler and it will give you more information here. Plus, it's also good to consider the other 11 houses. Though perhaps something else to consider is balance, harmony in your life, which to be blunt, it's these things that you find difficult to obtain within yourself. You find it hard to feel centered and at peace within yourself. And so perhaps you seek out you seek these things out from within your one-on-one -on -one relationships. And maybe it's through other people that they can help you feel balanced or more grounded. So this could be a close friend who is a great listener, for example, or this could be a parent or a spouse who is good at keeping you pretty level. However, this is not to say that relationships come easy, especially romantic and long-term ones. The reason for why I say this is because within these unions, you often give too much and you might sometimes turn into a doormat for lack of a better word. Oh yeah, when someone catches your heart, Aries Risings, you go above and beyond, you do all the things, but in the process, you might become oblivious to what the other person is doing at times. Essentially, you might possess a per judge of character once up close and personal with another person. So you might not pay attention to the red flags, for example, or you might simply be naive with little self-control. And as I mentioned earlier, you have the tendency of jumping into things far too quickly. So in the case of a relationship, before you know it, you're in deep feeling exposed and vulnerable. You turn into a yes person, a whatever you want person. Then again, if these things do play out for you, you most likely, you, you most likely will get to a point where you go, enough is enough. You somehow go the other way and seek out something new again. 
I mean, at the end of the day, this is the take no BS Aries we are talking about. It's just that in your case, Aries Risings, it might take a little longer. Still, however, it's these one-on-one -on -one relationships that teach you about what you're willing to tolerate and not tolerate from others. You somehow become stronger and more consciously aware through your relationships, regardless of the outcome. And to be fair, you might come to discover that you find a close partner or companion that is fair and diplomatic, someone who you marry and settle down with, or someone who has the looks and the brains. <laughs> And it's this individual that gives you a different perspective of life. They help you see the opposite side of situations, depending on whether you want to, of course. I mean, sure, you might be seeking out companionship, but you also stay true to your independence and your individuality and your freedom as well. And you also have the tendency of arguing your point of view with such a strength and a mighty force they're seeing, as I mentioned this, um, it might possibly be, there might possibly be some of you Aries Risings who find it very difficult to compromise in your relationships, which can make it hard to keep one for long. Or maybe there's some of you who just prefer to be single because you don't like how complicated relationships can be. Or maybe you prefer your independence that much. Though whatever the case may be, it's you Aries Risings that come across as headstrong. And for you, you move throughout the world, throughout your life, staying in your own lane. And when someone or something moves into your lane, you decide whether or not to go for it. Okay then, Cosmic Warriors, so that concludes my really long video all about the differences between the Aries Sun, the Aries Moon, and the Aries Rising. Now, if you happen to have any thoughts and opinions on today's video, then certainly let us know what you thought of the video in the comment section down below. But with all that being said, thank you so much for watching, thank you for subscribing, and of course, if you would like to see more videos from myself and you have not yet subscribed, then make sure that you click that subscribe button and also make sure that you give this video a like, remember, and I will be back with another video very, very soon.